on screen now. Nash Morris for the start of Sunday morning qualifying. Super three cars out on track. They'll have 10 minutes of their own to set a qualifying time before we send the Super two cars out for 10 minutes of their own qualifying. So split qualifying for the Super threes and Super twos this weekend. Gives the Super three competitors a great opportunity to have the track to themselves. We have 10 cars on track in the Super three category and then a further 15 in the Super 2, so that'll split the field nicely. Super 3 guys can concentrate, not have to look over their shoulder. They can concentrate on setting a, lap, a fast lap time ahead of this afternoon's race. 15.9 was the time for Armour Pole yesterday. Now, we've just had a Porsche Carrera Cup race on the circuit, and if history tells us anything, is that the track is typically very quick after a Cup race. And if there's anyone who's going to be across that, it's Paul Morris. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Nash Morris crosses the line with a 16.2. And his time yesterday was 16-1. So straight out of the gate, nice and fast for Nash Morrison. You're 100% right, Chad. The qualifying sessions work where the fast laps will happen at the end of a session, but coming off the back of Carrera Cup, there might just be the yep. quick laps happening early get here. Get out there and get it done straight away while that rubber's fresh from Carrera Cup. Nash Morris coming to the line here behind Reef McCarthy. He's gone fastest to the end of the second sector and Wait. improves his lap time to a 15-9-7. Will he finish this lap? gas out of 11 so he's chasing it down car struggling to get all the power to the ground through 12 dances the rears into 13 important to get a good drive traction out of the final corner straighten it up run as straight as you can to the line check the dash what lap time do you do and it's a 16-5 so nash maris hangs on the main game in the in the garages behind them or in the Super 2 Series, these cars have been so well prepared by the crew at Triple Eight and they have been quick. So confirmation of how it all rolled out in Super 3. Four tenths of a second separating Nash Morris from Michael Anderson. Jason Gomez saw third, but will take a five spot penalty, which will promote a few guys, including Blake Fidel, who's done a good job there. He'll be starting third. Obviously someone's seen what Zach's doing and thought, you know what, we want to be part of that. So great to have local companies involved in the championship as well. So, it was the calm before the storm. Now Super 2 rolling out for their 10 minutes of qualifying. Brock Feeney was the man yesterday. He took pole by only at the end, three one hundredths over Jaden Ojeda. So Ojeda will be thinking he's got something for Feeney today. Angelo Mazuris, Brock Feeney's teammate at Triple Eight Race Engineering, he qualified all the way down in sixth. So he'll be looking to rectify that. Tim Blanchard was strong. Straight onto it as well. Yeah. This is a really quick lap to start things off. 22-0 to the first sector. Sub 49 seconds to the second sector. So wasting no time now with the orange numbers on his door. Important to make sure you're nice and neat and tidy into the final corner. You want to give up a minute of your best work to make a mistake in the last 10 seconds of the lap. Straighten it up. Run it nice and straight to the line. What's Feeney's first lap? It's a 14-0. That's faster, two tenths faster than yesterday's pole straight out of the gate. So through the end of the second sector now, personal best, about a tenth of a second away from what Feeney was able to do. Jaden Ojeda is right on Ooh. with Feeney's lap time. So a bit lively finish to this lap. Let's see what he's got when he comes to the line. This will be real close. 114-0, the time to beat. He gets Ooh. nice and tight on it. 7-100s behind with a 14-1-5. Tyler Evingham now. He comes to the line. What's his final sector like? Third with a 14-4. So it went away from him a little bit in the final sector. But yeah, that lap time of Phoenix, I thought it would be on a used tyre, but that's what surprised me so much about how much faster it was than yesterday's qualifying time. Be two tenths faster on a used tyre. That's seriously impressive. The rest of the field's closed that gap down now. Jade only 700s away. We pick up Josh Fife, who's on his third push lap in this first run. Had a big, big contact with the wall at turn one yesterday's race. Didn't finish. And he's bounced back nicely. Currently P5. Matt White cars, all four of them, are all inside the top eight at the moment. So good showing from the Melbourne-based team. We've expanded out the four cars for this year. All ex-Kelly Racing Nissans. And five jumps a spot. So that's impressive on uh, third fast lap to go one spot up to fourth and knocking Missouri's down. But Missouri's is back out there now and second in this queue of cars behind his teammate. Can Brock Feeney dip it into the 13s? That's the question. Based on the time that he had, lights it up out of two, so not quite the tight temperature he needed to start that lap. Just struggled to get the front into the apex at two, then lit it up out for turn two. Tyler Everingham now coming to the line. What's he done? A 14-6. And fasts again through the second sector. He's picked up two tenths 
on his previous best through there. So this one looking like it's going to be faster than that 14-0. And I think you were right, Chad. I think that outlap when everyone else was out on push laps and Brock was having to get out of the way of everyone, he wasn't able to get the tyre temperature where he needed it. And now the tyre temperature is in the window. He comes to the line. 13-7. That gaps back out to four tenths of a second. We expected Feeney to go faster, and there it is. The first one minute 13 we've seen here in years. That's a great lap from Brock Feeney. One of the quickest laps we've ever seen in a Dunlop Series car. So the checker flag's out, and this is critical. Oh. Mazuris has run it too hot through 11 again. That's the third lap. He's yeah. had an issue in this session down there. Just cannot get a handle on turn 11 for the pit box 888 car. He's 10th at the moment. And he really needs to jump up a few spots here, or he's going to have a long afternoon. What's the time, Garth? Yeah, no. No improvement. A 15-3, and that understeer at turn 11 cost him a huge amount of lap time. So Angelo Mazuris will be very disappointed with that. To have your teammate on pole and you to be in 10. He had a tough day yesterday with mechanical issue. The car actually stopped on circuit. He was able to get it going again, but lost a huge amount of time. So... Missouris with a bit to do. Well, Corkendale comes to the line. Improves his lap time with a 15-3. His first weekend with this car. New car to his team. Next Gary Rogers Motorsport VF Commodore. Had a quick chat to him before the session. Said he's struggling to get this car rotated. Which, if you're new to the sport, doesn't mean that it's uh, trying to spin out. Just trying to turn the... Well, you're not dancing with it. It needs you, means you need more turn. You haven't got enough front grip. The front's not doing what you want it to do. But this car's doing exactly what Brock Feeney wants it to do. Fastest in practice, fastest in qualifying yesterday. He won yesterday's race. Pole position again today. Congratulations. How good is Brock Feeney? And that is a much more comfortable pole margin. Four tenths of a second. Zach Best, front row. Nicely done for Zach. And for here, that is a huge effort. He came in leading the championship. And for him, that's also nicely done. And that is a career best qualifying for Zach Best. But it's all about Brock Feeney right now. Congratulations to the crew down at Triple Eight. Ange Missouri's, well, he uh, couldn't quite get the lap that he wanted and he wraps up the top 10.